Well, more now on today's market pull, pullback. Let's bring in Tony Dwyer, chief market strategist at Canaccord Genuity. Tony, welcome. Uh, you yesterday, I believe it was, uh, put out a note uh, talking about the current extreme overbought condition in the broad equity market. It's as if the market heard you. <laughs> yeah. If only I had that kind of power, I'd be, uh, I'd be on the, vi the video in a commercial. By the way, welcome. Good to have you with us. It's great to be here, Tyler. You know, it, it's um, as we're talking in the green room, if I, if I walked up to Guy and I, I told Guy a bald-faced lie right to him, and then the next statement I said to Guy was, this one's right, I'm, t I'm telling the truth, you would question it, right? So the note that you're referring to, Tyler, is we called it, now it's proving time after you've had such a big rally. In October 27th, when the market was poised for, you know, had set the stage for a rally, what was it telling us then? Everybody was thinking it was going to go to 6% on the 10-year. Um, the Eight of the 11 sectors were negative on the year. All the indices except for the Dow and, and or the S&P and the NASDAQ were down on the year. What was it telling us? It was time to buy. So we're now in opposite day, and we hear that the market's telling us that because it's making new highs and it's rolling that we're going to have a great economy and interest rates are going to continue to go down. Well, the last time it told us something, it lied. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I don't, this isn't a comment on FedEx, but it was making a 52-week high. It was going up every single day, and then they came out with weaker numbers, and it's down 11%. So the lie, that's the risk the lie now is? The lie could be that everything's great, the economy is mm -hmm. a perfect soft landing, Powell got it exactly right. You know, they raised rates in a historic way into a generationally levered system. We're at 18 times earnings, excluding the MAG-7. So it's hard after the rally. In Oct on October 27th, Tyler, it was identifiable. You've never been that oversold on the, on the weekly stochastic we use. You had the bond market at 5% on the 10-year with three events coming up. A former Fed chair was going to tell us what they were going to issue for Treasuries. You had a Fed meeting, and you had a payroll report. What were the odds that Janet Yellen, a former Fed chair who's determining the maturity duration for the issuance, is going to hurt her own administration with a bad news item? So the rally was identifiable. It's gone a lot further than I, I or most others thought. Now it's proving time. You've got to see credit improve. Who wants to question Tony? Thought. Yeah, so just to... Everybody. Play, yeah, Everybody wants to question Tony. Advocate. Tony, you're going to tell you a lie straight to your face. Right. No, that was no, long no, going into the rally. So, <laughs> yeah, so to, but I, I'm wondering, though, if you're, you're talking about an 18 times multiple for the, you know, the 493, I right. guess, right? Right, yeah. With rates here, and if we use the 10-year as a, you know, just the mathematical peg, that doesn't seem particularly overvalued to me. No. no and I don't, th I don't think this is a period where you go out and short. I don't know if it's a one-day event or more, but... The Fed pivoted, and what's interesting about the Fed pivot, Karen, that in this whole environment, is in my career I've seen it a bunch of times. Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, and Michael Milken wrecked the high yield market. That's 1990 SNL crisis. Then you had 1994 Orange County, they made a pivot. Then you had 1998 with long term capital, they made a pivot. Then you had the dot com bust with WorldCom pivot. God, you're going way back, man. right? But but when they pivot, it's usually when things are really bad. They pivoted after there had been a 75 basis point drop in the bond market yield, after there was a 10% rally in the stock market. So it's very strange to me how, why they picked now to pivot. You're pointing to the December meeting as the yeah, pivot Yeah, I'm pointing point. to the December meeting. Now, I, our, we had written a piece called Higher for Shorter, because mm -hmm. when you spike in a levered system to 5%, it's not sustainable. And that meant to us that rates were going to come down more than most folks thought. Well, they've done that. And again, it's proving time. If you look back in last October, October 22 to early 23, the current drop in U.S. Treasury yields, mortgage yields, and B Moody's BAA corporate credit yields is exactly the same as it is today. Yeah. So, in other words, you're, you've done what you did last year. Now you've got to prove that market, it's more. But the market, from, from October forward to just last week when the, when the Fed did what it did or mm -hmm. did nothing but said what it said, uh, the market was basically telling the Fed, you're going to pivot, right? Right. And so, so just to push back on the we have to prove ourselves, rates are coming down. We've, we've yeah. seen that happen. But rates also spiked in, in an uncontrollable fashion to five. So they're coming down. Totally. So I think this is just the pendulum yeah. switching back. Dollar is coming in and commodity prices have come in. That's all bullish to me. And earnings have bottomed. So we haven't, hasn't the market proved itself? It, it has to to reflect what's happened in the credit market, what's happened in the commodities market. To get that, remember, a soft landing doesn't mean you stay on the ground. 
It means you need to reaccelerate. You need gas to reaccelerate. You've got to open up the capital markets. You've got to open up the corporate bond market. You've got to open up secondaries, IPOs. You've got to create a selling market for the private equity holdings. There's got to be some way to reaccelerate. You need an improved outlook for money. We have the same improved outlook for money that we had into um, the rally at the end of last year. So we're, we've, got, we've got a point where most people have a mortgage below 4%. So even at 65 to 7%, you can't refi. You need more improvement to really kickstart that whole credit cycle. This, as I said in my note, this is a great start. We've had a great start. Now we need that next leg of improvement to get that reacceleration, to get the plane back off the ground. You need full fuel. And that's, and that's what we're trying to get here. All right, Tony, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Have a good holiday. Great to be with yeah, you guys. And happy holidays nice to all the viewer you. and you guys. They took, us, they took us on a nice walk through history there. Right, no <laughs> kidding. Well, world. <laughs>